ticket for are you, him. Are you almost done? No. What? This guy's got the the most punchable face I've ever seen. The chutzpah. The nerve of this guy tells me to stop talking to my wife in the middle of a movie. How dare he? I'm now, see, I'm all, I'm, all, I'm all mad again. You know, we, we, got, we got a show to get to. No, no, Thank you so no, much for I'm calling in. Done. Thank- almost hey, done. Almost done. Hey. Please, please. He's talking, he's talking to me. To you. I'm just talking to my wife here. My okay? husband is talking to I me. I am talking to my wife. My husband is talking to me, to you, about you talking about us, about the theater. Well, I don't want to talk to either of you anymore. Listen and, to me. And our listeners don't want to hear this, this anymore. Up, we're gonna I'm going to hit you. We're going to have another hit me. Ro- Yeah, hit me from across the phone. We're hmm? going to have another hit Ruby me. Tuesdays incident on our hands right now. I, Maxine, you remember what happened ten, to Ruby Tuesdays? Yeah, I've got frequent flyer miles. I'm, I'm going to cut this call. I'm going to cut this call. My tan ass over there. Your tan ass? Your ass is probably so fucking white. You son of a bitch. What the? This motherfucker. You I'm from Jersey, son, son of a bitch. bitch. Half my day is spent in the tanning bed. This is exactly what Jersey happened. Jersey sucks. This is exactly you what. You suck. And I'm is, hanging up. This is exactly what happened. Hang hap- up. This is exactly what happened at Ruby Tuesdays. I was sitting there talking to my wife. Her ass might have been mentioned. At a level that might have been societally unacceptable. But, but this schmuck, this piece of sh- shit, if I may, uh, comes up and says, can I take your order? Can, can I take your order? And I said, hey, buddy, I'm talking to my wife. Like, and, yeah, and, and, and first of all, like you, we're you not going to order you already the told, You already told this story. You already told this story. Of All course right. you ate the frings. Look okay, at you. Listen. Look at you. You sound like a well, fucking you, job of the hut. You, 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 you look at me on the phone? Yes. You can't even see anything. I can, hear, I will, can hear the fat in your voice. Look, my wife will punch you in the face, you smug son of a bitch. I will punch you. You're doing there, doing your radio All right, well, thanks show. For, thanks for calling in, you guys. Thanks you for calling in the future knots. We oh, really, this uh, is how really we whisper it. in New thanks. Jersey. That's it. That's it. Oh, I'm thanks. hanging up. Yeah. Goodbye. But Eric said that it wasn't even the first time this has happened in a comic book movie before. Which, yeah. It raises a few questions. But he's like, Spider-Man 2, same thing happened. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I don't know what the pattern is there, but... No, I don't either, except that he needs to reevaluate why that... It's not the first time that's happened. Yeah. I've never had that happen. Never. I've almost gotten in fights with friends at movie theaters. Mm-hmm. No. After the theater, after the movie, <laughs> it was late. It was really late. We were tired. And you brought up a uh, a hypothetical a situation hypothetical that, that set us all. All off. of us got too emotionally invested in something that never happened. It was so stupid. Things got a little heated. <laughs> Everything's fine. Jake, I thought we weren't going to be friends anymore after that one. Well, Jake just didn't like Star Wars enough. That set off this chain reaction of events. Yeah, that ended was... up with Jake. Heading to the car the second the lights came up in the theater. Uh huh. It's not worth getting into. <laughs> and then I don't yeah. want to go down this road again. Contemplating. Suffice it to say, mistakes were made. <coughs> emotions were invested in something that didn't need any emotional investment. <laughs> that Star real. Star Wars could have been a little better. Mm-hmm. Could have been a little better. Mm-hmm. But everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're just three guys. Everything's fine. No, John. I I uh, <laughs> I, I'm I get in fights with friends, but I've never. That's a, that's a normal friend thing. Yeah. You call each other a fucking asshole. Might punch each other, but then it's over. And you go drink beer. Or in your case, water or whatever. <clears throat> I still sound like death. You sound like Typhoid Mary. All right. Fun fact about Typhoid Mary. Okay. She was in uh, the show The Nick. They did a arc about her. Um, and uh, she worked for the rich and affluent. And the only reason uh, she became known was because she was a maid for the rich and affluent. So the rich and affluent were the ones who were getting sick across New York. Oh. So like people were having typhoid who were poor yeah. throughout New York, like all the time. But the only reason the city and the government got involved was because the rich were getting sick. Typical. Typical. Now, if, <clears throat> if rich American women were getting Zika, yeah, we'd have already cured it by now. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Turns no. out the size of their baby's head is kind of an issue. That is so creepy, man. It's like kind of a button this year, I guess. Ugh. I don't want to be too callous. It's a weird thing. Being callous is a weird thing? No, I mean like birth defects, I guess. I don't want to de- <laughs> dip into that well too deeply, but... 
It's a fun well. It's a hell of a well. Fun. Nothing against the well. I just don't no. think this is the time or the place. To right. Talk. A, a well of birth defects. Uh, I oh, I thought it would be funny if um, <laughs> there was like a, a somebody who was bootlegging movies, but it was like the whole movie going experience that they were bootlegging, and not just the you know the cam version of a movie that's in theaters right now. So they've got like a GoPro on while they're buying popcorn, and they like kind of get into a tiff with the guy selling popcorn, and they're shooting the shit, and it's yeah, like yeah. the whole thing from start to finish. You could sell different experiences, like uh, night at the movies with your girlfriend, and she gives you a hand job. Or sure, a like job. a POV kind of thing, right? Or like even if it's just like the <laughs> the back of the head of the person in front of you is in every shot, like way too much. Right. You know, it's like realistic movie. A bald going guy experience. sits in front of you, and there's a gl- it's re- he's got a shiny head and the glare <laughs> off the movie into your eyes, and he's coughing like you the whole time. Yeah, you talk, yeah, and then he's yeah. Or someone behind you just smacking their lips really loud. Oh God! Or or uh, <laughs> or uh, has their legs crossed and the, their toe behind you is touching your seat, Ugh. and they're shaking, and oh, you're just God. slightly vibrating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's like a way to capture that experience, but like a realistic movie bootleg, I think is funny. Definitely, definitely. Or just like, like somebody who reads every word they see written down on the screen. Has that ever happened to you? That happened to me when I was seeing the Simpsons movie in New York <laughs> with my sister. There was somebody who compulsively read every word they saw written down like, out loud, kind of quietly to themselves. Like what? I mean, like, uh, it's like oh, crustios. <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, yeah, what does that say? Springfield. To... <laughs> yeah, murder should be allowed in those situations. For that, 90 minutes, yeah. That's kind of one of the reasons I like to see movies by myself. Number one, if my friend does something annoying, I don't want to hate my friend. Mm-hmm. Number two, I don't want them to see me uh, get in an angry state <laughs> because of some asshole who's smacking or like has an annoying laugh Mm -hmm. or is talking throughout the movie. Yeah. That's why I no longer see um, Tyler Perry movies because just the talking (laughs) is just too much for me. Well, that and the lawsuit. Yeah, well, that's a difference. Since the incident. The, the... (laughs) Medea in small claims court. Mm -hmm. They're making a movie about it. It's a powerful film. Right. What else did John remind us? What else we have? Well, I wanted to talk about... Okay, John. I'm sorry, go ahead. Never mind, John. So, I, no, this is, I'm writing down things that you guys are saying. Oh, okay. okay. Never mind. Um, I thought, it, here's the thing about the state of American racism. I just wanted to, <coughs> <clears throat> I wanted to broach this topic. Because I think we can all agree that things are pretty much heated right now as far as like that being a, a social issue. It's talked about, it's culturally relevant. And it only affected me recently when I was eating at an Asian restaurant and I was too afraid to flag down the person I was pretty sure was our waiter. You know what I mean? Because I was only I was only like 95% sure that that person had just taken our drink order. Because? Because there's a 5% chance that it's just an Asian person. Mm. And the stakes, were, the stakes are too high. I didn't want to risk it. So I'm like, I'm just going to... We'll get water on the next go-round. That's fine. <laughs> we'll just we'll wait it out until they swing back by. Well, I, I like to believe that... You know, we look the same to them, I hope. You and me? Or just white people. like. Yeah. No, I mean, it's not like pre, uh, malicious or like premeditated, right. I don't think. But can you imagine how embarrassing that would be if they're like, I'm eating dinner with my husband right now, you know? Oh, and I'm deliciously like, embarrassing. More soy sauce, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mortifying, but a great story after the fact. I once enough time had passed, and her husband had hit me as much as he wanted to, and we're know. even now. Yeah, but even if you hide, it's like if you're like if she's sitting down at a table, I'm like, Miss, Miss, we need more bread, please. Thank you. Bread. <laughs> she's like, I studied linguistics at Columbia. I'm like, <laughs> bread then. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying. More then. bready, sticky. <laughs> God help us. Oh, I'm sorry, listeners. You know what I'm saying, though? It's like, that's yes. that's how I knew this cultural uh, phenomenon had <laughs> spread to my life. It now affects me, where I had to wait a few seconds to get another sing how. Sing how? Yeah. I don't even know what that and is. Sing to? I don't know. It's an Asian beer. You like Asian beer? I'm sure. See, that's another thing. 
I don't like the beer, but I also feel like I shouldn't be saying I don't like Asian beer. <laughs> you cannot say that. There's well, very good reason why you shouldn't say that. Because <laughs> I'm just discounting the possibility of of any future enjoyment of Asian yeah. beer. But that's, I, what, that's what we call a blanket statement. Right. Are you saying I don't like Asian, comma, beer? Like I don't like Asian or beer? No, I love beer. Oh, okay. He does love beer. Um, I just read that they uh, found a recipe for Peruvian beer that's been it's probably dormant for crap. like 2,000 years. Yeah. And they've like brought it back and they've made a batch. Yeah. That's but what, I bet it tastes like dog hair. Yeah. They did that. Uh, one of the, I think it was Dogfish Head did that with an Egyptian uh, yeast that was like found in a tomb or something and made beer. Wow. No good. No. <laughs> Who knew? Now we know. I was laughing about that, um, speaking of Egypt, the movie Gods of Egypt, that yeah. whole like so $140 million epic. Yeah, that stars only white people. Yeah, some Finnish dude. And, yeah. <clears throat> and I get that that's silly, but it's also the way movies have been made since the 30s, you know? Yeah, that doesn't make it okay, though. No, I guess not. But it's an issue now, and like all of a sudden it's part of the national consciousness. But the review in the LA Times was so amazing because the first three letters or the first three words of the review were, "Well, now what?" or something like <laughs> that. Like, what the hell? Yeah, that review. And the last line, the last line in the review, it's like a half-page review. The last three words is just one sentence. It said, "It's just crap." That was you could tell that the author was like, "This is the bad part of my job that I have to see a fucking movie like this and write about it." I want to know more about. The casting process, I guess. Like a person walks in and they've practiced right. like their <clears throat> ancient Egyptian dialect, mm-hmm. you know, and they're like authentically Egyptian and they're like, can you play it maybe a little whiter? Yeah. Or how in the fuck did nobody at any point in the making of that movie and pre-production go, hey guys, I um, think we should uh, hire uh, someone who's not so white. I mean... Listen, these are great actors, but uh, there's a good chance, you know what, there's a 100% chance that the Egyptians back then were not, did not, do not look like Gerard Butler. They're not British, probably. Right. Yeah. Maybe didn't know Britain existed. We don't know. Right. But and isn't, I, at that point, though, isn't that just admitting, we don't want to win any Oscars. It's fine. Yeah, but it's like... <laughs> like the throne of the towel. They're so uh, uh, numb and blind to any sort of... They, whatever PR firm they have on retainer didn't speak up. Like, hey, guys, you shouldn't do... You're going to catch a lot of flack for this. Yeah. Nothing but happened. I think it is funny to see, though, like, okay, just go ahead and take the line whenever you're ready. Just go ahead and they're like, this is my kingdom, my kingdom of Egypt. This is Cairo and Alexandria. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Could you go ahead and jennifer aniston it up a little Mm -hmm. bit like go ahead and turn up the friends volume a little bit right and like what's the deal with pyramids huh come on (laughs) could it be more (laughs) could it be more of a triangle a little bit of uh costanza in there please (laughs) i've had it anubis is getting upset (laughs) yeah Uh, you look a little stressed out for making all these pyramids oh i'm stressed (laughs) yeah exactly there you go Nights on Al Jazeera 2, it's Ancient Egyptian Seinfeld. Join your friends, Jerry Egyptian. But I don't want to be Papyrus. Hello, Nubian. George Hotep. I'm back, Habibi. I'm back. I was at the Nile. I was at the Nile. Yeah, well, the Xerxes store called. They're running out of Jews. Elena Patra. Get exiled. And Tutan Kramer. Get it. <laughs> On their wacky adventures. He's a fig paste Nazi. A fig paste Nazi? A fig paste Nazi! <laughs> because he's my Hebrew slave. Are those Onyx Scarab pendants real? They are real and they're spectacular. You dipped your Ashbalati, you took a bite, and then you dipped again. 
at 7.30 and 8 o'clock weeknights on Al Jazeera.